This video contains the interview of a woman who allowed her boyfriend to beat her small daughter to death. Five-year-old Phoenix Sinclair had already seen a lifetime of neglect. She was constantly shuffled between family and friends, and even her social workers could not be bothered to see her before filling out their reports and moving on. Things only worsened when Phoenix's mother, Samantha Keymatch, began dating Carl McKay. McKay had a long history of domestic abuse, and he quickly targeted Phoenix. In June 2005, Keymatch watched McKay beat Phoenix in the basement and did nothing to stop him. When he was finished, the couple went upstairs. They didn't return for some time, and Phoenix had died. They tried to revive her, and when that failed, they wrapped her body in plastic. Keymatch and McKay buried Phoenix in a shallow grave near a landfill and told others she was still alive. They continued to collect welfare benefits with her listed as a dependent. Eight months later, one of the child's stepbrothers told his mother, a former common-law spouse of McKay, and she called authorities. You done very well, Sam. You done a good thing here, and I appreciate you being honest with me and telling the truth. You did the right thing. There's um, a couple things that we talked about that I'm a little bit confused on, though, because I I feel like I kind of have two different stories about it. So I want to make sure I got it right and get the truth about what happened. Okay. The part that you and I talked about that day uh, when Phoenix died, you were telling me about what you think killed her in the basement. Um, can you explain that again? Because you explained it one part, but you had talked before about it and it's kind of different. So I want to make sure I got it right. So I want you to talk to me about the morning um, or the, the day that you guys were at home when Phoenix died before you went to Wes's dad's she house. Was, she was okay. She was breathing. Phoenix was rarely with her mother. Usually she was in the care of friends or family. Keymatch was neglectful, but the person that posed the most danger to Phoenix was Keymatch's boyfriend, Carl McKay. Okay, and I and that's what you told me. But when I had asked you about what it is when that you think came, killed her. Yeah, when we came back, I said it looked like she, she choked on her puke. That's what I said. That looks like me. That she might have died from choking on her puke. Right. There was a puke spot there. But then we talked about what happened down there. Yeah. And that's where I'm confused, is the time when you talked about the puke, but then you also talked about Phoenix being thrown across the floor, or thrown onto the floor, banging her head. Yeah, that was the day before. Okay, so that's where I'm confused about, as what day, what thing happened. Mm -hmm. So... The, like, what do you mean? Like... The day before she died. So we, we, we know she died on June 11th, right? Mm -hmm. So on June 10th, what happened that day? What happened to her that day? Those things you were telling me about? That's the day I was pushed her. She banged her head on the floor. Okay. That's what I said. She banged her head on the floor. Right. Was pushed her. See, I thought you said that that was the day that she died. No. Okay. At only five years old, Phoenix was the sole target of McKay's frequent outbursts. None of the other children were ever harmed. So this is why I want to talk to make sure I've got it right because there was parts that confused me about that. So on June 10th, the day before, that's when he threw her and she hit her head on the floor. Okay, so what else happened that day? Now, you had told me about hitting her in the leg a couple times with the, that bar, that pipe. I think you called it a bar, maybe? A pole. A, yeah. A pole. So did you hit her with that, that thing that day, the same day that he pushed her and she hit her head? Okay, so what day did that you hit her? That was a different day. I don't know what day that was, but that was a different day. I know that wasn't the day before she died. Okay. 
This is the different day. You know, the day that she died, you had talked about leaving with Wes to go to his dad's, mm -hmm. and then you came back because Daniel phoned because she wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. Well, before you guys left, before you went to his dad's, what happened in the basement? I need you to talk to me about that again. Nothing happened in the basement. Like, what do you mean, like, something like... Like, what do you mean, like, how it happened? Well, we talked about... She, there's nothing that happened. She was... She was breathing. She was all right to me when... Before I left. Okay, she, so... She was, she was laying there, yeah, but she, she was breathing. And when you say she was laying there, where was she laying? On the floor. In the basement? Yeah. Phoenix's brother later testified that McKay punched and kicked Phoenix for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, and that's the last time you saw her? Yeah. And how do you know she was breathing? Because I checked her. Okay, what, why did you think you had to check her to see if she was breathing before you left? What had happened? Because I had just, I always check on her. I just checked, it was just something like, I don't know why, I just did. Okay, because we had talked before, and you had suggested to me that Phoenix died because she choked on her puke. Mm -hmm, that might have been, I said. Okay. I don't believe that's true, and I don't think you do either. After we had talked about that, and I asked you, what do you really think killed her? And you told me that it will probably be an injury to her head. Mm -hmm. well, right? Yes. So when you had talked to me about how she got that injury, what day did that injury happen? On June 10th. And how do you know that? Because I remember that was the day. Because I remember thinking maybe... Maybe that's how she died, I was thinking. So I thought maybe that's how, maybe that's why she died, maybe because she had an injury to her head because maybe, because when she fell. Okay. Maybe, so. Maybe that was what happened. So was there anything wrong with her on June 11th that would make you think that she was still hurt from the day before? Um. Because Wes said that he told her. No, he didn't tell her. He said that she said she that she couldn't. That she couldn't. That she wasn't hungry. Hungry, or she couldn't. Or she couldn't come up. She couldn't come upstairs. He said he, he asked her to come upstairs. She said she couldn't come upstairs. Why couldn't she come upstairs? I don't know. He didn't say why. She didn't say why, he said. All he said was that she said she couldn't come upstairs. So what happened on the morning of June 11th that hurt her where she couldn't come upstairs? Except you know, and I know I'm that something. I'm trying to rem remember it, and trying to remember it. Mm-hmm.
So when you said that you went to check on her... Yeah, when I <clears> checked on her, she was okay and breathing. Now she was breathing, but was she beaten up? Was she hurt? Phoenix's stepbrother checked on Phoenix after Keymatch and McKay left the basement. He said she was cold, and he could not detect any breathing. I think maybe she was hurt. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell, like, because I, I just, like, she was just laying there, and she was breathing. Like when somebody's just laying there. No, when somebody's just laying down. Okay, so you... She was okay though when I looked at her. Okay, so she was alive, you say, when you looked at her. Now, when you think she was kind of hurt, what made you think she was hurt? So I was thinking maybe... Thinking maybe because of her head, maybe. I was wondering about that. Okay. And so are you telling me that nothing happened in the basement that before you went, that nothing happened to her in that basement on June 11th? Hmm. Because you had said before that you weren't the one that beat her. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, who beat her? And you said it was Wes. Yeah. And we were talking about that day. I said he beat her. But, but like, I said he beat her. All I want you to do, Sam, is tell me the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't beat her. Okay, and I'm not saying that you did. I'm asking you to tell me the truth about what happened before you went to his dad's house that day. I don't... Yeah, I checked on her. She was okay. She was breathing. Did somebody beat her that morning? Or earlier in the day before you went to his dad's, did somebody beat her? Like from the time when we were gone and the time we got back? No. From before you went. You and Wes were still home. Daniel was there. And Phoenix was there. Before you and Wes left. Well, yeah, I said, uh, yeah, I said Wes beat her, but I didn't say he beat her that day. I'm talking about the day before. Okay, I want to know what happened that day. I think I think that they I think he told her to have a shower that day. That morning, I'm not sure. Unless I'm thinking of another day. But I don't Did Phoenix get hit before you and Wes went to his dad's? Not sure. 
her. I never, I never hit her, though. I didn't hit her. Was Wes downstairs with her before you left? He was down there with her. And what was he doing down there? I'm not sure. Dematch continues to be evasive, and she says she wasn't the one to hit Phoenix, but she will not admit it was McKay. That's when after he told me that she didn't want to, and she said she couldn't come upstairs. Okay, so he was downstairs with her. He came up, and that's when he told you she said she can't come upstairs? He told me, yeah, she couldn't come upstairs. He asked her. He said he asked her to come upstairs and eat, yeah, to eat, and she said she couldn't. Okay. So then, is, did you go downstairs and check on her? No. So after he came up and said she can't come up and eat, what happened? I didn't think anything. Though maybe she was just too lazy or just tired to, or she just didn't want to. Okay. Because that's what she sometimes she wouldn't want to eat. Sometimes. Okay. So then you went and checked on her before you left? Yeah, I checked on her before I just went down there. Okay, so did you see her again after Wes had come up and said, you know, I asked her to come and she says she doesn't want to? Did you see her again after that? No. Okay, so then you guys went to his dad's? And is that when Daniel called? He called after his dad. And what did he say? Wes talked to him. Okay. So when Wes got off the phone, what did he tell you? He just said, okay, then we'll see you later. We're going to go home now. Did he tell you why? And then when we got in the car, I said, so why Daniel called? He said, because she's not breathing. Okay. And I felt like I got scared and I didn't. So that when you got home, what is the first thing you did when you got back home? Went downstairs. And what did you see when you went down there? She was laying there. Where in the basement was she laying? Mm -hmm. On the floor. By the, by the, like on the left, like when you come down the stairs, mm -hmm. this way, but kind of by the wall. Okay. Is there any windows in the basement there? Yeah. So from where the window is, where was she laying? Like where in the basement, when you come down the stairs, where is the window? The window is over here. So it's to your left? To the left by the, by the wall. Okay, so where was Phoenix laying, like in relation to the window? It was like kind of like the sun. Was she near the same wall as the window? No, it was like, um, how do you explain it? Was she near a wall or in the middle of the floor? She was kind of, kind of, kind of in the middle of the floor. There was, there was things. There was, there was, yeah, there was, there was some like furniture by the wall there. Okay. Like what kind of furniture was down there? There was a washer and dryer and couches and um, just uh, the wall unit. Okay. So from where the washer and dryer is, where was Phoenix? 
Keymatch can barely mumble when answering direct questions about what happened to Phoenix, but she becomes much clearer when providing mundane details. It is obvious to the detective that Keymatch is trying to protect McKay. Like if you like think the wash and dryer, was like, like that was junk that was down there. Oh, okay. They weren't hooked up. No. Okay. It was just hanging whatever, whatever. Okay, so you went downstairs and she's laying on the floor. Um, how was she laying? <clears throat> she was laying on. She was laying on her. Back. Okay, did she have any clothes on? No? So when you guys went down there and you found her naked laying on her back, is that when you said that Wes tried CPR? Okay, and then that's when it got into where you, you went to get garbage bags and you guys wrapped her and we talked about that already. We talked about stuff like that already, yeah. Yeah. When Keymatch and McKay returned to the basement, they tried to revive Phoenix by taking her upstairs and placing her in the bathtub to run water over her. When she didn't respond, they wrapped her in plastic and buried her body. Samantha Keymatch was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison with no parole eligibility for 25 years. Keymatch, now 40, has married another inmate, has taken part in counseling, and has accepted responsibility for her crime. The Parole Board of Canada is allowing Samantha Keymatch visits with family members and, separately, an Indigenous elder for spiritual development.